Welcome back everybody. Well, hey, today I wanted to address some of the newest stuff to come out along with some stuff that I just got in the mail and I figured why not look at these. So, first of all, we're going to be doing quite a bit of Armada talk to start things off. And then second, we're going to jump into the 2000s universe with this boy and his fantastic green paint job. We'll look at some Dinobots, and then we'll look at some other dudes that came out of a certain two-pack that, uh, yeah, I actually really kind of like them. So, like I said, we're going to start with the Armada talk. So this is the one thing that I want to address right here, because some of my most favorite YouTubers, they did not remember why Hotshot has these guns. They glance over it and one even said, well, maybe it's just extra accessories or blasters you can give to somebody else. It's like, no, no, they go with Hotshot because during Armada, he was on a one-man mission where he stormed Decepticon HQ and basically just to try to get Galvatron to listen to reason. And in that episode, he had two guns that looked very similar, if not exact, to the ones that come in this set. And he was already in his hot rod color scheme. So that is what that actual set is referencing, is that one episode where he did that, went on that one bot mission. And it, that's like a small little thing, but I was like, guys, come on, I, I don't expect you to know everything, but again maybe it is a little bit of an obscure reference so I get it but the other thing that comes up in that set is our boy Jolt because technically the Power Links version of Jolt which this is should be coming with that hot rod however when he and Hotshot got the Power Links upgrade they kind of switched colors and a lot of people said, oh, why is he orange and stuff like that? Well, guys, the designer said that that's just kind of a preliminary version of Jolt. They're going to release him in more of his traditional red. But for right now, the one they have on hand is a little bit more orange. But again, just a small minor thing. So one of the things I wanted to go ahead and bring out is that of the mini cons of the original Armada era, Specifically the ones that make the Sky Boom Shield, the Requiem Blaster, and the Star Slash Dark Saber. Because they are generally held by 5 mil peg ports, you can still use them with the new Legacy guys. And especially like with Optimus here. I think he looks really good with the sword and the blaster. And I mean, he would look good even with the shield. And Megatron is just killing it, obviously, too. And speaking of these nine, if we go back to that deal with Hot Shots box art, everybody loves to zoom in on thrust and talk about that, but it's like a lot of people have missed the Hydra cannon to the left, at least to our left. And I'm like, guys, these nine formed the Hydra cannon. And as awesome as these are, I'm wondering with them now releasing the pre-tool for wind shear and the jolt that we were just talking about, I'm like, are they going to re-release Minicons that can form these three weapons right here because if so I would be kind of interested to see what an updated look would be and Just like thrust is a cue for a figure that's going to be coming out That hydra cannon might be just as much of a clue and it kind of seems like a lot of people have really missed it So again, just something that I noticed now back in the day Hasbro actually released a deluxe version of Armada Optimus and repainted it as Nemesis Prime. Now, with all the time, energy, and effort that went into this guy, you know that they want at least two more recolors out of it. And I think that with Hotshot setting the trend, a Power Links repaint of this Optimus Prime will probably be in the works. Yet, what about that third color scheme? Well, like I said, they're not going to release a deluxe version of this Optimus like they did originally. Because what you see here, this is all the guy came with, himself and his Minicon. And I was like, well, technically in the show, he did actually have a trailer that we see him with in more than just one shot. And I can actually see Hasbro recoloring this guy. And we're talking about both components. So you have the base robot mode, which if you wanted to go with a more cartoon accurate one, you could have a teal sort of approach. 
But if you wanted to have something that kind of blends maybe the animation model look and the toy look, because as you can see, this boy has some hits of red that maybe didn't necessarily appear on the animation model. You could actually go ahead and do a version like that instead if you wanted to kind of again blend the cartoon and toy aesthetics into one and i think it kind of works because in the show he's supposed to be black like nemesis but he kind of has a bluish tint to him so if you did the cab in kind of a bluish tint but you made sure that the rest of the mold was black again you're blending those two aforementioned aesthetics together and i think that like this with the teal i think it looks okay but again i would want some of those red hits instead and i think like this would be probably the superior paint job if they decide to do a nemesis version of optimus prime and so moving right along, we're actually going to take a look at our boy Toe Line here. No parking means no parking. And I have always thought it was kind of a weird choice to use Scrap Hook, which don't get me wrong, Scrap Hook is great and he rocks the Mad Max aesthetic because that's the whole junkie on thing is Mad Max style. So it is a little bit weird to see Toe Line's color scheme applied to that mold with all the bumps and the gnarly bits on it. but. It doesn't make me dislike the figure altogether. Maybe it just means that uh, Toe Line's gotten a little bit edgier whenever he got uh, maybe upgraded. So, okay, we'll roll with that sort of reasoning, I guess. However, like I said, it is a really good mold. Scrap Hook definitely did prove that to us. And I love the little hits of purple, and you know, he's obviously got his lime green, and of course, one of the best colors out there, orange. And then the silver hits, yeah, it just, it works all around. Now, one thing that I've always kind of thought about when I looked at these kind of spiked shields is it sort of reminds me of Rhinox Chain Guns of Doom, which, uh, let's just kind of see how this looks. Oh yeah, if you wanted to have, oh yeah, mm-hmm. Thank goodness for five mil compatibility, you gotta love it. Now there's not a whole lot of figures I can really show you him in comparison to other than more modern figures like Clamp down here. On the R.I.D. shelf, he's kind of like a surrogate for Prowl and uh, that's kind of not a really bad scale between these two. I think that they actually are pretty much one to one for each other. Now, if we go ahead and pull in an original Prowl mold, and this is the Universe Inferno version, you can see that it's a little bit more out of scale than he was with Clampdown, and I mean, but at least you know how he looks now with one of the original molds. And here is Toe Line rocking his new mold, and I gotta say that, uh, you know, it's not as noticeable, again, with that Mad Max styling in robot mode. It does feel a little bit more like the character it's supposed to be. And, yeah, that's, oh, he, yes, mm-hmm. And I like the fact that, unlike Scrap Hook, I feel like I can be a little bit more free with where I have the accessories, like with the smoke sacks on his back as opposed to the arm, and having this as like maybe a handheld sort of weapon as opposed to one that's arm mounted. Now you can go ahead and mount the spike shield like you see on Scrap Hook, but you know, we're gonna play loose with the rules because one of the things that he does also have like Scrap Hook is the little minuscule blasters, which, which I have never felt really did this mold justice. So again, that's why we're gonna play loose with the rules and kind of let him have a machine gun sort of blaster. But you can see that, oh man, you don't wanna mess with this guy. Look, oh yeah, that looks really cool. <laughs> I mean, he did have a record gun, so you know what, it, it works really well. And I mean, look at that head sculpt. I mean, that is definitively toe line. And yes, I'm, oh, I'm sorry. I'm just really, I'm really glad to pick this guy up because, you know, right now he's kind of like the new hotness, well, at least one of them anyway. And I went to Target and it was really interesting because this guy comes in cases of eight, which generally those will kind of clog up the shelves at some point. But out of a case of eight, he was the only one left. And so, I mean, I just like, I instinctively knew who it was. I just snatched him up. I'm like, all right, this one's mine. And, oh man, I gotta tell you that I am not regretting picking up Toe Line because like I said, he's not a big R.I.D. character. So never having had a Toe Line figure before, uh, this is not a bad first one, to be honest. I'm digging it because 
In addition to him being the character he is, he now has the capability of being taken from Scrap Hook's mold to do something in particular. And doesn't our boy look fabulous merged with Clampdown? Man, I, I like how the green, the lime green, just really kind of pops with the white and the black that he's rocking. And uh, it's a very kind of spearmint flavor that I'm, I'm getting right now uh, as far as the colors go. However, the one thing that we always address with Scrap Hook was the fact that you can put all the armaments and the limbs and stuff, but it kind of leaves the cab section kind of doing its own thing. We basically made a cannon emplacement out of it, and uh, I honestly feel like that's the best use of the only piece that gets left over because it doesn't have any mail ports to plug into, like, clamp down's back or anything like that so i was like well you know we already had the model with our junkie on pal so let's go ahead and imitate it with our new boy and even though the dino bots are maybe a little bit too big to hide behind the emplacement i think it still looks really good so kind of some final thoughts on toe line here is that it kind of feels like some of the tolerances for his joints are a little bit better than they were on Scrap Hook. And that just may have been my copy, but all the time our other boy, his arms were like popping off at the elbows and toe line really doesn't have that problem. A lot of his tolerances, like whenever you are pulling him apart to do the combiner thing or weaponizer thing, I guess. I mean, just all around, it seems like some small things have been tweaked, which usually that's not the case on a, a reuse of a pre-existing mold. Like I said, that's just could have been my, my copy of Scrap Hook, but toe line seems to be quite the improvement. Plus, I just love my neon green boys. I mean, you know, some would say that maybe that's a toxic trait, but uh, maybe that's just a matter of opinion. And we're just kind of going to glance at this boy real quick because I want to give him his due full review. And I got to say that much like Toline, just the neon green of Toxitron is really, really cool. And I'm loving the G2 Decepticon symbol. That is sick. I'm loving the toxic stuff coming out of the trailer. And a little bit of side fiction here is that there are different origins for Toxitron. Like some people, you know, he's a, like a messed up clone of Optimus Prime that got disposed of. And another really darker twist is that in a different universe that is really close to the, the 2000 R.E.D. one, a, another dude named Megazerak, he came along and basically he kind of killed Scourge and then turned his corpse into Toxitron and I'm like, oh wow, that is really dark and um, you know, I don't personally like that origin of Toxitron because I love my boy Scourge so maybe I'll, I'm rather going with the rejected clone of Optimus Prime that became a toxic mess. So we just saw these boys a second ago, and I have to say that for a core class version of Grimlock, at least as far as robot mode goes, I dig it. Like his Tyrannosaur mode, just because of maybe the combining deals, like these look like huge oversized hips in T-Rex mode, so I'm not too crazy about that, but I wanted a core class Grimlock to go with my core class boys I've been buying, which, you know, back in the day I never would have done that, but anyway. And then, of course, a Dinobot that I've never had is Scar. And Scar, I just love his big, beefy, chunky proportions. And the fact of how they reutilize that, I guess it's a Ankylosaurus, is, uh, or Ankylosaurus, however you pronounce it. And uh, just how they reutilize that for him is really, really cool. Yet I will say that his beast mode is probably my favorite mode of his. And I mean, just, yes, sir. Look at, look at that glorious. Now, obviously the reuse of the combiner mode hand is the tail. Some maybe view that as cheap, but I mean, you know, from certain angles you can't tell, whereas others you, you definitely can. So, okay, whatever, it's a core class. Why are we being super critique-like of it? So I kind of feel like maybe he's sort of treading on Snarl's vibe and the fact that pretty much from the back he's protected and it would be stupid to try to attack him there. As this version of his dino mode, you could imagine that he could just and take some boys out at the legs. So again, even if he is treading on Snarl's vibe a little bit, I think it works for him too. 
Now, one of my other boys that I've got recently is Cloud Cover. And, you know, being just another reuse of the Ramjet mold, I mean, he, he kind of rocks his vibe. Although, technically, this is the underside of his jet mode. So, like, when you're flying along, like, the checkerboard pattern, that may not be the most uh, or best strategic call, but uh, it definitely helps his robot mode have a little bit of pop of color, and I definitely like that. And this version of the mold has always been really good. Both this recolor and the original one that came in the two-pack with Dirge. Both of those boys have the same head sculpt. However, Cloud Covers is different because on the boys, they just kind of had this kind of grim, sullen look, where as you can tell on Cloud Cover, he's rocking more of that yelling face. And I don't know if that was maybe a partial from perhaps the Skywarp mold where he was yelling. I don't feel like it's as horrified of a look. And the thing was, is I really didn't think about it until I really started looking at his head and I'm like, you know what, I don't think the other boys have it. And as I was just talking about, evidently they don't. However, if you want to talk about different head sculpts, because these guys have that and then some, now, to be honest, I have always been a fan of the Scourge mold. So to have that, the Alpha Trion, and now Ratbat himself. Yes. Let, oh, man. I was always kind of intrigued by the BotCon version, but I never sought him out. And I'm really kind of glad that I never did because he's a deluxe mold. And the fact that most of the cons now are getting the Voyager treatment. Yes. And I don't even mind it being... A reuse of the Scourge mold. It looks good. I love the head, the face on that, because while I'm not the biggest reader of IDW, or I wasn't anyway, I do know Megatron's origin story, and this scumbag right here, I love how he gets his comeuppance, because his assistant Soundway betrays him, shoots him, and basically reutilizes his spark and traps it in the Rat Bat cassette that he would later use. And I'm like, I'm like, dang, that is a dark fate for this guy that used to be his boss, and now he's taking orders from Soundwave. So, hey, if you're a bad guy, you kind of fall due to your own bad deeds. So, looking at Megatron, okay, this thing right here. <laughs> okay, the mold, we know this mold has been used a hundred times it feels like. No, not that many exactly, but it's been used a lot. And because of that, I feel the boy's legs and his feet are a little bit weak on my copy, so I have to position him just right. But even then, you can get some dynamic poses. And I love this, like he's getting ready. And Megatron here, let me tell you, he looks like he is ready to get into a brawl with somebody. Although technically at this point, he's not rocking the mad despot energy. This version of Megatron right here is like pre-Decepticon warlord, maniacal, I will conquer the universe version. And like, I dig the helmet. And the, like the minor stripes and the minor equipment, the pickaxe that he used to basically put in one of those Cybertronian Senator's chest. I mean, and the fact that this mold, the, you know, we're used to seeing him in like gray and white and, all, and silver and stuff like that. And so to see this mold in black, yes, there, there was a third party toy that basically was the minor Megatron and it could convert to like a spaceship mode, the drill tank. And also, like, uh, I think it was maybe at least possibly two robot modes. I'm not sure. And this thing kind of gives me the vibes, but the fact that this thing is official and it's referencing a version of Megatron that, again, is at this point in his time, he's just Freedom Fighter Megatron. He's well on his way to becoming Despot Megatron. But it's kind of a, kind of a unique take, and I, I love just how, like, a lot of that's reflected in the molding differences to match his comic appearance. I bought the set for Ratbat, but Megatron kind of became the surprise star of it. And despite the initial Amazon mix-up where I did purchase these boys, but the listings flipped, so when they fulfilled the order, they thought I wanted the Orion and the, the, the Shockwave one. And I was like, nah, I hate that. The Shockwave is a stripped down seeker. I hate how it looks. And I just don't like the Orion either. It just doesn't, 
I don't like the face and maybe, you know, hey, if you like it, good for you. Personally, it's just not a thing I like. Man, look at this dude being a pompous bureaucrat. Like, he's like, my senators, can you not see? I mean, that hand is perfect for that. Although he does look good with the blaster in it too, so he can rock that. However, with that being said, everybody, I hope you enjoyed everything that we kind of took a little bit of a glance at today. I am really, really liking where Legacy is going with some of these box sets. I'm hoping to have Toxitron as a review up on the main channel at some point. I don't know what it is about the Neon 90s, but they are back in full swing, especially with that Toxitron collection. So, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed our little video that we did. And as always guys, Terrorize!